So let's go in and show a demo of Bevel. First off, I should mention that in order to install Bevel, you just go into your preferences and your add-ons menu, and it'll be sitting here right with KitOps, KitOps Batch, KitOps Synth, any of these that you have. Actually, you won't have Synth. That's a new product that we're working on. Just a note is that there is this filter materials, and if you click this, it's going to only allow you to use the EMS, which is the uh, EV material system that we sell. And it's kind of optimized for this. But if you don't click this, you may have trouble adding some of your custom materials. But we're going to leave this off. And that's really it. So the panel category is bevel, meaning that we're going to put it over here in the side. So once that's installed, we'll save our preferences and we'll move on. And now we have bevel right here. Let's go ahead. I'm going to go into the preview mode. And with our object selected, notice I have a modifier. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a normal bevel to this. The normal bevel, we're going to use the UV angle limit of 30. But let me just check and make sure that's the same number that we're using down here in our normals. So that's 30. This is 30. They both look good. So that's a good thing. So UV island margin 0 0.10 is about as high as you want to go. You may want to go lower, like 0 0.02 or something like that for something that's very complicated. In fact, let's go ahead and do that. Let's show you what that looks like. So I'll go into KitOps and I'm going to add kind of a medium complicated cutter to this cube. So I'll grab this one here and I'll add the insert right here. And I'm going to center it because I'm in smart mode. I'm using KitOps Pro 2. I'm going to center it on both, oops, both axes. And I'll hit the S key to scale it. And we can see what's going on. Let me actually scale it in this direction. and move it down in this direction so now we can kind of see what what our object looks like and this will be a good test for us so with that applied or not applied uh, if you look at our modifiers you see we have our kid ops modifier also on there so let's go back into bevel and now that we have these all set up let's remember the first thing we want to do is apply the modifiers so if you want to it might be a good time to go into power save and go ahead and save a copy of this so that you can be able to go back to it if you need to so let's apply the modifier and then we need a UV unwrap it. And so I'm going to hit a, the UV unwrap. And just to show you what that does, I'm going to go to UV editing. Let's find an image that's going to be easy to look at. And I'll hit A. And you'll see this is the UV unwrap. It automatically unwrapped everything. And notice that all the islands that are separated by 30 degrees or more, and these are each considered an island, island right? So that is considered an island. That's considered an island. So all of these islands that have a 30 degree or greater angle of difference in their normals, you will see they are all separated. And that's so that we can blend our bevel map across there. So I'm going to go back to my layout and we're going to move on to step number three. But before I do that, I'm just going to go over to the inserts, right click here and say delete hierarchy so we don't have that to deal with. Okay, so now I want to figure out what bevel I want to use on this. So let's select this object, hit the preview normal button, and we'll go into this purple color. And the purple color is not different from the purple color that you know when you don't have a material applied. And that's because we don't have anything applied right now. What we're trying to do is preview what that angle is going to look like. I'm going to leave it at the default 0.5 and I'm going to stop the preview. I can bake this at any resolution. The higher I go, the longer it's going to take and the higher the quality of the bevel. The lower I go, the shorter, of course, it's going to take and the lower the quality. I'm going to leave it at 1024, which is a 1K texture right now. And you can use normal spaces object or you can use tangent. If you want to export this into another package, you're probably going to want to use tangent because that's going to be the traditional looking normal. So I'll leave it there for now. Object sometimes gives you better bakes. They're both really close. So I'm going to leave it like there and I'll press this bake normal button. And as I do that, look down here in the right hand corner. And what we're doing is we're seeing the progress of our bake. And once that's completed, which will be in just a second, there we have it. Uh, now that that's completed, we want to generate a material to look at this. And so let's hit this generate material. Now, notice there's nothing actually selected. We have some stuff that we could select, but we, we're not. And if nothing is selected, we're going to use the default materials that are built into bevel, which is not a bad idea. So I'm going to hit the generate material and you can see now we have very nice bevels all the way through this object. It looks really good. Now let's go ahead and add the worn bevel look. So I'll go over here to worn bevel and you see now more buttons become enabled. So let's go into our mask and notice i'm going to preview this and this is going to be the mask and it's twice as big as the bevel and a lot of times it should be about twice as big maybe just a slight smaller than twice as big is good as well 
And once we've got that, we can stop the preview or we can bake the mask. If I hit bake the mask, it's going to automatically stop the preview. So just so you're aware, you don't always have to hit that stop the preview button. And so we're now doing the exact same thing as we did before is we're creating a mask. And that mask now is almost finished baking. And now it's done. And now that it's done, I'm going to hit this generate material again. And now you can see we have a very nice worn edge mask. And you can look at this and you can see that even the bump is being reflected nicely. Now let's talk about this material for a second. I'm going to go up and I'm going to look at this. And in this material, I have this worn edge. And in the worn edge, I can adjust different things. I can adjust the scratch width so I can make it higher or lower. And this is the scratch amount. So how much, how much scratch we're going to add to it. And let's just move this out. This is the scratch scale. So this is actually between, I would suggest leaving it 0.5 to 1 is good for the scale. And then we have the brightness, and that means how bright is that scratch going to be? So you can see that, that adjusting that uh, changes things as well. So the other thing to note here is that if you don't want that bump effect, just come in here and select bump and right click and say toggle note mute. That's the M button and that will mute it and now you don't have the bump effect and that's kind of nice if you're doing worn rubber so I have a, a worn rubber material that comes with EV material system and you can use that and you don't really want to see the bump on that the other thing you can do of course is you can always toggle the worn edge look I'm gonna hit the M key to mute that and you get a little bit different of an effect and again I would use this on the worn rubber edges so let's turn that back on let's turn that back on now now let's say I want to add a dirt to this. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to choose the paint mat. That's the original material that came with bevel that when we assigned it in this generate material, it brought this material in. And in here I can change the color of a course if I want. And I have this other node called the new dirty node. And so I'll come in here and I'll right click on it and I'll say toggle mute, which is again the M button. And you can see we've added dirt all over to this. Notice that it's very shiny. So I'm going to go into this material and on the roughness amount, I'm just going to add a little bit more to it so it's not quite so shiny. Okay, and we're good there. So let's go ahead and adjust the dirt amount, 0.1, and maybe the up dirt amount as well. I'm just going to just move that up just a little bit, as you can see. So we have a little bit coming up from the ground. And let's just change the color, maybe something more brownish. And as you can see, we have AO affecting the inside of this which will be nice because we want to look like dirt is accumulated on the inside edges so once this is done it's going to be easy for us to go over here and say generate material once again and we're going to use that same material to create this surface and you can see that worked out pretty well so let's talk about how we add other materials here i'll go into kit ops and i'm going to use the ev material systems concrete and i'll choose let's just use the concrete plane for now and I'll just select our object and say add material. And so we've added a very plain material to that. And let's go ahead and adjust its parameters while we have it here. So the first thing I'm going to want to do is adjust the scale a little bit. And I think actually our scale looks pretty good. Maybe I'll move the bump scale down to zero because I'm not going to want to use bump. I can do that or actually can go over here in the bump and just turn it off right there. So we're not going to use any bump. Then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to change the roughness amount. And I want this to be a little shinier. So I'm going to move it down something like that. And you can start to see that, yeah, it's it's quite a bit shiny. Actually, let's not, maybe a little too much. Okay, that looks good. And if I want, I can change the color. And I'll have to move this off a little bit and make it a little darker. But we'll leave it right about there. That looks good. And the last thing I want to do is I want to add that dirty note. And that's only available because we actually inserted that other material that we looked at before. So I'll say Shift A, Group. And you'll scroll up and we have our dirty node right there. And we've added it. And I'm going to use this uh, 0.1, something like that. Up dirt amount. We'll just bring it up just a little bit and maybe make the dirt not quite so dark something like that so there's our dirt and once that's done i'll come back over here to bevel all i need to do now is choose that concrete that we were just working on and use that in the normal bevel and of course we'll still use the metal the default cw bevel steel in the worn bevel node and we hit generate material and there's our surface and look how nice that turned out while we're here let's take a quick look at the normal map i'm going to hold this and say go into uv editing with it selected and I'm going to go up and grab this normal. 
and you can see on the edges here you can see it just gets a little bit it changes a little bit notice that this one pixel is split between these two areas i just want you to understand that that's why we need these boundaries of these islands to be set apart because if they weren't we get a sharp line across that bevel and the other thing i want you to notice is in the convex areas of the geometry of this object we don't see any of the worn bevel. We see some ambient occlusion shading, but we don't see the worn bevel. And the reason for that is because in reality, we would not see a worn area right there. Obviously, there's no way for an object to come in contact there and wear that out. So that's something else we take care of for you. And last thing, let's talk a little bit about EV rendering. And here we are in EV and you can see it looks great. But also, I want to mention this thing works perfectly in Cycles too. So here's our Cycles rendering and you can see our object looks super in cycles. So I just want to let you know you can render this in both EV and cycles. So I hope this helps you understand the power and the value of the new KidOps bevel add-on. Thanks for watching. See you online.